Ben Armstrong is a name that elicits a response from a lot of people in cryptocurrency. Some of it good, some of it bad, but you don't sit on the sideline with Ben Armstrong. He runs pretty hot and you like him or you hate him and you know, no middle ground. But we're going to talk today. We're going to summarize a little bit about what's going on. We're going to bring you up to speed as quickly as possible as we can. And then we're going to take a few of those receipts back and remind you of who these people are. And uh, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, and the bell to be notified. But let's take a walk down memory lane, if you will, to the first spot here. And that was when um, uh, TJ Shett, who is the alleged owner of BJ Investment Holdings. Um, BJ, I assume, stands for, um, I go down on dudes. I don't know what that means, uh, but it's... Uh, investment holdings. So parent company of Hit Network took decisive legal action in removing Ben Armstrong from the company and specifically the BitBoy crypto brand. Now, as of uh, it, right now, there were allegations of theft that have not been founded. There's been a whole bunch of fans that cry about it all the time. Well, if TJ says it, then it must be true. And I assume you talk like that in, in, in my head. So um, most probably what you say is, we me no wanky, bing, oink, wong, me, wong, me, me no wanky, or whatever it is that you say. But the important part is there was an allegation that Ben was stealing money from the company, his own company, by the way. Let's keep, keep the pin in that one right there. Then we had the allegations of sexual assault from other dudes in the company that were found, that were unfounded per the police. And if you want the police reports, remember, I did keep the receipts and it is in the previous video, which I will link in this video as well. So uh, they lied about theft. They lied about sexual assault. Uh, they then made a lie. And this is Lady Frame himself who gave the lie that um, Ben was perhaps illegally paying his mistress. Well, his mistress um, never got paid by the shit net hit where hit net hit network. I, I did I say that <laughs> never got paid by the hit network, uh, was paid actually by stake.com, who continues to stand by Ben Armstrong, nay Bitboy Crypto, if you will. And so we found another lie. He's a liar. Everything that he says should be questioned. Then he sicked uh Carlos the cable guy on. Ben, who proceeded to threaten him. And then we find out that Carlos isn't even Carlos. He's actually uh, Larry Smith. And Larry Smith, the guy who kidnapped somebody at one point uh, and held them for ransom uh, and served prison time. So he used a convicted felon for his own device. And all of this because he would not remove Justin Williams from Ben's presence. Ben, the owner of the company, TJ, the minority owner of the company, and TJ would not remove Justin Williams from their building. And keep that in mind. Justin Williams is the person who's responsible for Vumeo NFT. Justin Williams allegedly took investor money, uh, $3 million of investor money, including um, a quarter of that from Ben Armstrong himself. And uh, have you guys ever bought anything from Vumeo? Just want to ask that question. If you haven't. Well, I wonder where Vumeo is. It was a $3 million startup company. I wonder where Vumeo is. I wonder where TJ is. I wonder where everything is. Where's the money? It's a weird question to have to ask, right? So they used uh, a strong arm guy to uh, steal, basically, Ben Armstrong's Lamborghini. And look, if you don't like Ben Armstrong, you don't like the story of the Lamborghini, right? Fair enough. But after stealing his Lamborghini, Ben goes to Carlos's house and look... At this point, I should tell you that Ben and I had had many conversations, and I'm just a small cog in this wheel, by the way. I'm not, we're, Ben and I are not best friends or anything like that. We talk, uh, but we're not best friends or anything. But uh, Carlos, the cable guy, um, pretends to be something that he's not and had threatened and threatened and threatened Ben to the point that even Ben's uh, estranged wife said he threatened to put him under the concrete. He threatened Ben's life. And the guy said, no, man, I'm just talking about, I think what he said was, I was just talking about going to prison, you know, or whatever it was he said. I don't really understand what he says in most of it. But 
and I heard the conversations, by the way, because they were recorded. Ben knew that they were being recorded. Ben recorded the conversations with these people, and I have heard these conversations. So I'm speaking out to let you know, and I did let you know in January that I've heard these conversations. And Carlos, the cable guy, repeatedly said, you know, you did it, and you did it, and you know what I mean, you know what I mean, give me money. Something like that. And uh, that flashes us to uh, Ben getting arrested, going to Carlos' house. It's like, I'm not scared of you. You know what? Here's the thing. If you didn't realize it at this point, that was just a promo event for Ben Armstrong. That was just Ben leaning into the situation and confronting the situation that he was presented with, where the people that he trusted, his friends, uh, and in fact, just so you guys understand, Carlos to that point had tried to befriend Ben and was one of his quote unquote trusted associates, all the while he was backstabbing him. So just for clarity here. So there's a testament to Carlos, the cable guy's character. And that leads us to why is Carlos in the conversations with Justin? Why is Justin and Carlos, the cable guy, in conversations with TJ on the phone while in mediations? Why are all these things happening? And by the way, remember, we do have the receipts. We do have the recordings of the phone calls. So just understand, there's a lot going on that you guys have not been made uh, aware of at this point. So, but let's take this a little bit further. The arrest happens, uh, all of the things happen. And then you guys, you guys, you, you, you start dog walking, you start dog walking. Let's go down the list here. Uh, we got, you know, Borovic, cool. Um, <laughs> minister of NFTs having fun, just, just having fun. Alex Cobb, just pointing it out. Um, rich quack, same thing. Um, Pleditor, uh, that's not what it is. Gotchstein, again, reporting on what's going on. Ted.pls, Ted from Pulse, Ted DiFiasi. My advice to BitBoy after his arrest, go home and be a family man. My advice to Ted, uh, go home and stop being a bitch, man. Then we have uh, Blockchain Boy. Uh, Blockchain Boy said BitBoy Crypto. This, by the way, before any of this is happening, Bitboy Crypto is being referred to the FBI, and if he fails to show in court by Monday, they're issuing an arrest, a, a warrant for his arrest. Uh, Keek. Well, guess what? Blockchain Boy, number one, eat a goddamn salad. Number two, none of that happened. So uh, way to lie to people and eat two salads, in fact. No dressing. Jesus fucking Christ, no dressing. Um, on and on. And you see the people that come out here wanting to hate on... Um, and and in every single possible way, all you have to do is go check. Well, guess what that leads to? That leads to a fight. That leads to Ben saying, you know what? I need to come claw back some of that clout, if you will. Um, and then we get the lawsuit that Ben files, and I give you the breakdown. This is me giving you the entire breakdown of everything that happened in that lawsuit, letting you know exactly, exactly what happened, the circumstances leading up to it. I'm probably boring you with some of the details right now. So I'll move on from there. But if you're, you're interested, go check out Ben Armstrong lawsuit details. You can see it on my channel or you can see it on Ben Armstrong's channel. But it gives you a clear breakdown of exactly what's happening in Ben's side to this point. Then Ben got into the, we don't call it an octagon, but we call it karate combat. Ben Armstrong goes into karate combat and fights more light, more light. The guy that created um, Bobby Sue, Jonah Hex. Uh, dildo baggins, Inu, or whatever the goddamn name of this thing is. Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic. I think I got it right there. But he steps up to the fight. Several people did not want to have the fight with with Ben Armstrong. And here's the thing: what you're seeing right now uh, is a is a repeat here of Ben Armstrong clocking uh, more light and then walking him down because Ben Armstrong was on a mission. He was on a mission to prove, and you know, more light was basically everybody. He was TJ. He was Carlos the Cable Guy. Uh, he was, uh, who's that guy from Vumio? What is Vumio? Did Vumio ever launch? That's $3 million. Where's Vumio? Where's the money? What happened? Oh, Justin. Justin Williams. That's what it was. All of these guys who've done nothing, nothing for you, by the way, except buy views, buy likes on their channel. He just represented all of those people. So Ben came out here and took the win. And then while, while taking something of a victory lap, just showing, hey, look, I'm not afraid of you. Carlos the Cable Guy, uh, or anybody else. Then you have uh, Ran the Wiener Man, who steps in and says, all I can say is that BitBoy is lucky I wasn't in the ring with him last night. I would have destroyed him. 
he wouldn't have lasted a full round. Well, what you call that is a clout chasing tiny man. It's funny. Somebody like Ran the Wiener guy is desperate for attention. The place that he wants to steal it from is BitBoy Crypto, Ben Armstrong. And he's still calling him BitBoy, so I think it's okay, TJ, to call him BitBoy because, well, you know, it's okay, right? Um, so anyway, Rand the Wiener guy says he would have destroyed him. I mean, if that's the case, there's going to be a, a karate combat number two, right? Uh, I think. So I, I guess Rand the Crypto uh, Wiener guy, uh, I guess your response now would be, yes, I will do it. Or um, let's have an alternate because I'm not doing anything that day. I don't even know what day it is, but I would make the time uh, for Rand the Wiener, man. Because it's important that we settle our differences, right? If we have differences, you don't even know me, right? But you will. Anyway, I kid ran the wiener man because, you know, he's a wiener man. What's he going to do? Make a post about it? Make a bug-eyed video um, with, with the dude saying, wake up? I mean, what is he really going to do, right? Miles already dumped him. Wild, isn't it? That that ran scams people and then says, and I didn't do it. Whew. Anyway, guys, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. George, we're all George. None of us are really George, but some of us are George. We're all kind of George. I mean, we're a little bit George, right? We should at least be a little bit George. George stepped up. George supported Ben. George had a great event here. George gave Ben an opportunity to fight, to release some of that aggression. More Light stepped up and agreed to take the fight. It was a fantastic moment. A good time was had by everybody. Of course, we all watched it and we saw that, you know, and to be fair, guys, I will tell you right now, uh, I did send a message to George and said, you know, if we do this in the future, we should have people like us, people like influencers who should be sitting at that table, not Mike Maj, like, uh, although he's an influencer, let's be fair. Um, and then Boss Rutten and God, Joseph, whatever his name was, they didn't know anything about the fighters. So we should probably do a better job of letting people know, giving people hype. You know, I think we, we probably could have done a better job of hyping this up. We're all influencers, right? And I'm curious what you think about the fight. Did you did you think that 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 Ben Armstrong redeemed himself very well? And secondly, I just want you guys to know this is only the first part of the fight. This is only the first part of this fight. There are more fights for Ben to have, but the winner, the winner's already been determined. TJ, I hope you're having a great day, my friend. It's not financial advice. Uh, my name is Bleed. Ben Nation, Ben Coin. The future's bright, and we'll see you at the top. What's going on, everybody? From now until the 26th, Cryptonomy.finance is doing a drawing and hosting a giveaway. Make sure that you participate because this could be massive. You can also follow them on Telegram. Links in the description below and on X. The description is also in the link down below. Also, make sure that you guys understand that I have done a fantastic job so far. You can see what I've done. So th this, by the way, this is not cash out until November 21, but so far my accrued interest is 61,820. And let me point out here what I'm doing here. This is the launch pool. This is the big uh, launch pool that I keep telling you guys about. And here's the thing. You see tokens that I talk to you about. You see stuff like Dev E. Uh, you see stuff like DeFi. You see real tokens, Ruby Protocol that are, are getting vector protocol. These are things that we've discussed on this channel where these things have started to blow up and they've started to have uh, these, these, these big um, uh, moves and take advantage of it while the opportunity presents itself. And remember uh, to get in, you have until February 